During the 1930s, during the, the Dust Bowl and the Depression, thousands and thousands of Americans had to leave the Midwest and their farms. These were all salt of the earth kind of folks who you know, had great pride in taking care of themselves. And they could no longer do that because they couldn't grow anything. They couldn't take care of themselves. And they became refugees, refugees in their own country. And they went primarily to California with the idea that there were jobs in the, the big valleys, the fertile valleys of California where there wasn't a dust bowl. And they ended up living in refugee camps in California and being treated very poorly by the local people who did not want them there, did not want them taking their jobs. I mean, the same kind of uh, language and ideas that we hear about refugees coming from other countries today. Woody Guthrie had lived, grown up in Oklahoma and Texas, and he was a singer. And so what he did was he went to these refugee camps and with his guitar and met these struggling people, and he asked them to tell him their stories. And they would tell his, their stories, and he would set them to music and sing their stories back to them. You know, all of a sudden, they were more than they had been. You know, they were now a piece of art in which somebody had cared enough to you know, raise them up by writing a song about them. I mean, they knew how important that was. It wasn't changing their actual situation, but it was changing their morale, which was incredibly important. So he did that. And then, you know, in, the, in 19, around 1940, he hitchhiked from Texas to, to uh, New York City. And then at the beginning of the, uh, the, the World War II, he wrote his most famous song, which if, when I go into schools and I say, kids, do you know who Woody Guthrie is? And almost always they say, I have, they have no idea who Woody Guthrie is. And I said, well, can you sing This Land is Your Land? And I said, oh, sure, we can sing This Land is Your Land. And I said, well, sing it. And they sing the first two verses, or the first three verses, which are the ones that celebrate this beautiful country from the redwood forest to the Gulf Stream waters, et cetera, et cetera. That it belongs to you, it belongs to me. You know, isn't this amazing, this place we live in? That's what's taught in our schools. But that wasn't why he wrote the song. The last part of the song has these other verses. The first verse is about the celebration and the beauty and the, the joint ownership of land was a setup to get into the last verses where he said, one bright sunny morning in the shadow of the steeple by the relief office, I saw my people. As they stood hungry, I stood there wondering if this land was made for you, you and me. The song was leading up to that point because even in the Depression, there was a huge diversity of inequality in wealth. I mean, we had refugees in refugee camps and we still had very wealthy people who were not sharing their wealth you know, with the people who were struggling the hardest. And for Woody Guthrie, this was what needed to be sung about. That's the kind of person that Woody Guthrie was, and that's how he used his music to try to bring um, that kind of awareness to all of us.